growing. We were looking at the planting season in Georgia. Also realized, I started, I was one night I was writing and I got, went off like a two hour cotton detour. Uh -huh. You know, Arizona's one of the biggest cotton producers in the world. I knew that. Yeah. New Mexico, southern New Mexico produces, has a bunch of cotton production. You must have known that. I knew, I knew, uh, Arizona. Pima County? Yes. Hello, Pima, Pima County. County. Um, something to think about. I forget how much was, like, where they're, like, where they're sort of the cliche plantations out here. But we, well, see, we could cheat. There's ways to cheat. There's ways around it, unless we're, like, in the middle of a desert. Yeah, that's what <laughs> Solaro's. <laughs> I don't know. Be a bit of a giveaway. Yeah, and I don't know. Be in Georgia. <laughs> well, I mean, we have, might have to make a decision. We don't know where we're at. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Are there other kinds of plantations? Does it have to be can, Were there other kinds enough that we could justify doing something? Or something well, like sugar cane was another one that, that yeah, we, we talked about, which, which yeah. works great. Yeah. Um, and that, but I mean, besides that. I mean, if we got, we could sh literally sure. shoot. If we found a place that had a cool building. And you know, had a cool setup. Mm -hmm. We could cheat. You know, we could sh way we could shoot around it. You wouldn't really know where we were. You just knew we were in a cotton plantation. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't yeah. get a saguaro in the shot. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That'd be a little awkward. Um, I actually noticed when I went through to change it from sugar cane back to cotton that there aren't that many places in the script to change. So like, there, there's actually like modifying it to back and forth or to whatever. I mean, that's something we can even do while we're shooting. Yeah. We're like, okay, we're going to contemplate. Like, I'm not, I, that doesn't really affect to me any way, shape, or form in the narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing is the horse riding around. That's kind of freaks me out a little bit. Like, that's something I'm worried about. So anyways, I'll go into it. So. You must have added that. No, I did. Okay. Yeah, I added a bunch <laughs> of shit. So just I prepare yourself. I avoided horse. Okay. Okay, so, um. You were avoiding horses, and he's like, nah. Yeah, the overseer's got to have a horse. Make <laughs> um, so, okay, so the stuff where uh, Jones or Smith comes out and he does his speeches on the porch, you know, right. he pitches all his balloons, like the money and all that stuff. Yeah. We're probably going to shoot that in a row. Mm -hmm. Just keep bringing them out and just moving down the script. Yeah. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because one of the things that we got to work on is taking all these characters. So what I, the way I had seen it at this point, and this is anything I say right now is adjustable. I'm just telling you where right. I'm at right now. Right. Um, like 10 to 12 slaves that have actual characters in the film. They're okay. actual, not just slave one, slave two. Like I want to give them names. All right. Some of them will have character arcs. Some of them are just going to be fodder. But um, that's not only good for the script and good for the shooting, but it's also good for the actors. Yeah. They can take the character on and they might do part. something we don't even expect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the way I saw it was, and for simplicity, is one overseer, Jared's the overseer. Okay. There is a scene in the opening scene where some guys help him whip. You haven't read this, I wrote this. Okay. And I had the two capos, is what I'm calling them. They're managers in the script, but I'm just for me. Because we talked about the, um, the Nazi camps and how yeah. they the capos. Yeah. And I had two characters, these, the two black guys, Slug and Scout. Okay. Which yeah. are going to be like bullies. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Yeah, so, and I'm just making these names up and just pull them out of my ass. I'm not married to any of these yeah. names. But, um, uh, I wasn't looking at this. I didn't scout. I said, forget what I was going to say. I accidentally changed Rose to KK. I didn't realize you named her Rose. I don't care. I it's a character matter. KK, yeah. And, um, um what was I, I going to say about Slug and Scout? Slug and Scout. Oh, this brings me to my next point. I wrote this, like, I just blew through it. So there's going to be, you know, you know, I just want to get it done. Yeah. Um, one of the one of the problems in the script in general is there's a lot of characters that's kind of like the beginning I have the Irish guys and they just kind of disappear. Uh -huh. And so like Slug and Scout being bullies, like there needs to be some setup to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I totally agree. Like I yeah. had that general yeah. thing in my head, but that totally you basically wasn't wrote in Smith. the script. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah right. Yeah. But it's, like, yeah, we totally need the the project managers. That are in the. Well, I mean, you've got the dough, and we're making a pizza, and now we need to yeah. lay the pizza out, yeah, put the I toppings did, on. Yeah. I did like nothing specific about them. So right. I'm just throwing the like, stuff out there. Yeah, I, I know, like. I know. So, uh, and I didn't do that well with it either. There's a lot of problems with it. So, yeah. Um, I just want to be thinking about it while we're talking. Yeah. Um, there'll be inconsistencies because of that. The way I see it right now, I think that'll lose about 30 pages. Okay. Now, the thing that I wrote you about on Messenger, where I was like, I have this thing that I think we need to change, but I don't want to do it until we collaborate again. Okay. Remember that? And I was like, let's do this quieter meeting. Let's not do the read-through yet. Mm -hmm. 
that has a lot to do with 30 pages and then a couple more reading. Okay. okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. I didn't catch much much of the dialogue. You'll see. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the stuff I should just let you see while we're reading. Oh, one of the, this is just a small one. When I read, I remember reading Frederick Douglass, and he said that on their plantation, what they used to do is they would get Sundays off, and then the good old boys would bring them this hooch, and everybody would get shit-faced drunk and said it was like the saddest thing. Mm -hmm. So he never drank, because yeah. it was like this way for them to distract them yeah. and sort of, um, you know, get them out of, just get them wasted, and also made the slave owners look down upon them. Like, they would give them the booze, and they look at these fucking loser drunk. Yeah. So, and then they could feel worse about themselves. Too. Right, yeah. exactly. So um, I don't know if, because you had them don't know alcohol, you had Smith. Yeah. So I'm just thinking about that. Okay. They, I was thinking they might be getting fucked up every week or something. I don't know, I'm just thinking about loud. Yeah. Sarah takes Flower's hand and they skip away, focused on the two little girls disappearing into the distance. I won't let this be her life. Isaac shakes his head, lowers his face, and keeps working. As we see the entire cotton field filled with slaves working and Jared grinding them on. The human spirit is a remarkable thing, crushed and broken one moment, rising into an intense flame the next. We saw plenty of both on the plantation that year. Even when things were quiet on the surface, a deep well of anger and frustration smoldered below. We all knew that something had to give, but that was before he arrived. Exterior, a horse carriage, day, moving an elegant carriage being led by beautiful elegant horses, a long-haired white male in his 30s, dressed gothic style, drives the carriage, attached to the front of the cab of the vehicle stands a tall serpentine cross hood ornament, I like that, inside the carriage, plush in red, Two pretty blonde women sit on either side of a meticulously and extravagantly dressed man wearing a red fedora. Tilted down, the fedora covers the mystery man's face. Mystery man is wearing pristine white gloves, and on his right hand glove is a serpentine cross ring, same design as the carriage hood ornament. Suffice it to say, you are all now free, free at last, free and safe. This is a time to celebrate, and celebrate we will. For the rest of the day, whatever work you were going to do, leave it be, relax, enjoy. Shortly, we will have a pleasant surprise for all of you. Mr. Jones and I have a few more things to deal with, and then I will be back out to tell you more. The slaves surprised and unsure, but a hopeful murmuring begins rising among them. Jones and Smith head back in the house, inside the house, continuous. You sold your the plantation without telling me? No. What the hell was that? Keep your voice down. Madam, would you be kind enough to provide me a complete inventory of whatever provisions you have in your larder? She stands frozen for a beat. Now, please. She looks to her husband and he gives her the okay. Pissed, she heads off to the larder. And get your kitchen ready for a big meal tonight. Mrs. Jones paused for a short beat, more confused and disturbed, then continues on. You owe me an explanation. What the hell was that? I do wish I had time to explain things before having to do anything like that, but all in all, I would say that that could not have gone any better. What? You just told all my slaves that they're free. How do you know they won't all just wander off? I know, because it is my business to know. He pulls a creepy black pocket watch out and glances at it. Folks know me as Smith, because I do view myself as a Smith of sorts. A slave Smith, to be precise. Just as an ironsmith fashions iron into durable, useful tools, I forge and mold slaves into the most reliable, useful tools possible to best serve the needs of their owners.